And now it's time for us to create a project. The way that it works in Final Cut Pro is when you want to start editing your video and audio clips together, you do that in a project. And you work on your projects down here in the timeline. Now right now we don't have anything here because we haven't created a project yet. I could click this button here to create a new project. Or I can go up to the File menu. I'll do it this way. File. New. Project. And then I give it a name. So I'll call it Hair story version one. It's a personal preference of mine, but I always like to give my projects version numbers because a lot of times I work on different versions of the same project. So it's helped keep things organized. And then where it says in event, you decide where you're going to store your project. Now we're going to work on the project down here, but the project itself gets stored in one of your events in your library. So you decide which one. Now you can see by default, I had this one selected. So that's what it's showing me the O2 video one, but I also created earlier this event called projects with the intention of storing the different versions of my project in there. So that's what I'll do. I'll switch this over to O1 projects. And then for starting time code, if you want to have something other than zero, you can make changes to this. And then for video settings, notice it says set based on first video clip properties. So in other words, whatever the first video clip is that you drop into your new project, it will create the project settings for the video settings to match whatever that first video clip is. Now, if you want to take manual control over this, you totally can. You just click on this use custom settings button, and then you can make changes. If you want to choose something that's 1080p and then choose a certain resolution and a certain frame rate, you can make all those changes, but I'm going to use automatic settings here. And then for audio and rendering, it says the audio is going to be stereo and 48 kilohertz. And then the rendering is ProRes 422. Don't worry about that for now. And then I'll click OK. Now I have a new project. Here's the name of it, Hair Story Version 1. And then here it is in the timeline. It's blank. It's empty right now. This dark gray area or this darker area along the center is called the primary storyline. You'll see how that works here in a little bit. I also want to show you, if I go to my projects event, you can see here it is. This is the project, Hair Story version 1. And you can always tell when something's a project because it has this kind of clapboard overlay on top of the thumbnail. Now it's an empty thumbnail because it's an empty project, but this is what it looks like. I'm going to go back over to my O2 video event. And then most of these clips, if I click on the little button here to switch it over to list view, and then I want to see the frame size of all the clips. So I'm going to control click or right click on the column headings and I'm going to turn on frame size so I can see them. And then I'll scroll over and then let's look for frame size. There it is frame size. So you can see this clip is 720 by 480. Most of them, as I scroll through this, you can see there, most of them are 1280 by 720. And then there's a clip here at the bottom, 1920 by 1080. So whatever the first video clip is that I drop into my project, the project settings will match that. So let's try this 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna click it to select it. You can see I have this clip selected now, the Trinity Giggle Enter Frame. And then if I just click here to select it and then just click and drag and bring it down into my project and let go, behind the scenes, Final Cut Pro made the settings for this project match that video clip. So it's a 1080p project now because this clip that I dropped in is a 1080p video clip. Let's take a look. I'm going to go over to my projects event and then I will select this clip and you can already see the frame size of the project, but I'm going to open up the inspector. I want to show it to you here too. I'll click the inspector and you can see here it is hair story version one. That's the project and it's 1920 by 1080 29.97 frame rate. I'm going to close the inspector and let's remove this video clip. I'm going to select it and just hit delete on the keyboard to delete it from my project. Now, when you delete it, you're not actually deleting it from your whole library or anything like that, or from your hard drive. You're just removing it from the project itself. It's still in there in the browser or in the event. I'm going to go back over to my O2 video event and let's take a look at a different clip. I'm going to scroll up and let's find the one that's called interview one so here it is, Interview 01. And what I'll do is I'll, I just have a range selected here. That's fine. I'm going to click and drag this range down into my project and then let go. Now let's take a look at the project settings. If I go over to 01 Projects, select it, open up the inspector, and you can see the project is now 1280 by 720. So in other words, it's now switched over to a 720p project because the first video clip that I put in the project is 720p. And by the way, at any time, if you want to make adjustments to your project, you can click on the modify button and then give it a different name, have different starting time code. You can change the frame size and all that. The only thing you can't change is the frame rate. If you already have clips in your project in order to change the frame rate, it has to be an empty project. Anyway, I'm going to click cancel here and I'll go back to my O2 video event. I'm going to turn off the inspector 
and I'll switch back over to film strip view by clicking this button to toggle it back. Now let's take a moment to talk about what should our video settings be for our project. Well, the answer to that is it depends on a couple things. First of all, it depends on the destination. Where are you going to be putting the video when you're done editing it? So let's assume that when we're done with this, we're going to be uploading it to YouTube. Well, the good news about that is that YouTube is very versatile, can handle all kinds of different video settings. We can upload 720p, 1080p, 4K videos, and a bunch of other things, and it can handle it just fine. So that's not really a concern. One thing that should concern us, though, is that we have all of this source footage, and most of it is 720p. So if most of my source footage is 720p, it doesn't really make sense to have the final output be 1080p when we only have one clip that's 1080p. So instead of doing that, let's make our project today 720p and then we can use other sizes of video clips in the project. That's fine. But when we output it, it's going to be a 720p clip that we upload to YouTube. And now we've officially edited our first video clip into the project. In the next video, let's talk about different types of edits.